Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dayakara Mahore Toma Bina Chaitanya Jagata Samsahare Toma Bina Kedayalu Jagata Samsahare Patita Pavana Hitu Tava Batahara Patita Pavana Hitu Tava Batara Patita Pavana Hitu Prabhu Napae Beara Mosamopatita Prabhu Napae Beara Aha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suki Aha Prabhu Nityananda Kripa Bolo Kana Koro Ami Bara Duki Dhaya Koro Sita Pati Adwaita Gata Tava Kripa Bole Pai Chaitanya Nitai Aha Swaru Sanatan Rupa Raguna Vata Yoga Shri Tiva Prabhu Lokana Daya Koro Shri Acharya Prabhu Shri
ರಮಚಂದ್ರ ಸಂಗಾಮಗೆ ನರಚಮಜ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ದಯ ಕಾರ ಮೋಹೇ ದಯಲು ಜಾಗತ ಸಂಸಾರೇ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಭಾಗಿರಿ ಬರಚಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಭಾಗಿರಿ ಬರಚಾರಿ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಚನಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಚನ ಯಾಮುನ ಥಿರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಾಮನಥಿರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂಚಮ ದೈವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಯೋಚಯಮುಷು ಭದ್ರೇಶು ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವಯ ಭಾಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿ ವೇರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ನರದ ಮುನಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಚೇತ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಏಟೀನ್ 
Tanai kam atmanam ashesha dehinam. Tanai kam atmanam ashesha dehinam. Tanai kam atmanam ashesha dehinam. Kalam pradanam. Kalam pradanam. Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Swateja Sadvasta Guna Pravakham Swateja Sadvasta Guna Svateja Sattvasta Guna Pravaham Atmaika Bhavena Bhajadvam Adhadvam Ada Atmaika Bhavena Bajatvam Madaha Tenaika Matmanam Ashesha Dehinam Tenaika Matmanam Ashesha Dehinam Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Svateja Sadvasta Guna Pravaham Admaika Pavena Pajadvam Adha Tenaikam Atmanam Asheshya Dehinam Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Svateja Sattvasta Guna Pravaham Atmaika Bhavena Pajadvam Adha Tenaika Atmanam Asheshya Dehinam Kalam Pradhanam Purusham Paresham Svateja Sadvasta Guna Pravaham Atmaika Bhavena Bhajadva Madha No? Anyone else? No? Okay. Tena. Therefore. Ekam. One. Atmanam. Unto the supreme. Unto the supreme soul. Ashesha. Unlimited. Dehinam of the individual souls. Kalam time. Pradhanam the material cause. Purusham the supreme person. Paraisham. The transcendental controller. Swatejasa. By his spiritual energy. Dwasta. Aloof. Guna. Guna pravaham. From material emanations. From material emanations. Atma, Atma. self. Ekabhavena. Ekabhavena. Accepting as qualitatively one. Accepting as qualitatively one. 
Bajadvam, engage in devotional service. Adha, directly. Translation. <clears throat> because the Supreme Lord, because the Supreme Lord is the cause of all causes, He is the super soul of all individual living entities and he exists as both the remote and immediate cause. Since he is aloof from the material emanations, he is free from their interactions and is Lord of material nature. You should therefore engage in his devotional service, thinking yourself qualitatively one with him. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. According to Vedic calculation, there are three causes of creation. Time, the ingredient, and the Creator. Mm. Combined, these are called Tritai Atmaka, the three causes. Everything in this material world is created by these three causes. All of these causes are found in the personality of Godhead as confirmed in the Brahma Samhita. Sarvaj, uh, Sarvam Karma Karanam Ishvara Parama Krishna, no, is it, where's that verse from? Sarva Karana Karanam, yeah. Is for Paramakrishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha and Adir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. The last line of the first verse of the Brahma Samhita. Narada Muni therefore advises the Prachetas to worship the direct cause, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As stated before, when the root of a tree is watered, all the parts are energized. According to the advice of Narada Muni, one should directly engage in devotional service. This will include all pious activity. Chaitanya Charitamrita states, Krishna ba Krishne, ba Krishne Bhakti Kaila Sarvakama Kritahaya. When one worships the Supreme Lord Krishna in devotional service, one automatically performs all other pious activity. In this verse, the words Swatejasa dvasta guna pravaham are very significant. The personality of Godhead is never affected by the material qualities, although they all emanate from Him, from His, from His spiritual energy. Those who are really conversant with the knowledge can utilize everything for the service of the Lord because nothing in this material world is unconnected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya 
Chaksurun militanye na tasmai shri gurave namaha Vanchakaupata rubyasya kripa sindhu bhai evacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So Prabhupada begins this purport telling us that there are three causes of creation specifically time, the ingredient and the creator. So these three things, Prabhupada says these three things, they are called Tritai Atmika and that means the three causes. But Prabhupada explains the three things, time, the creator, and the ingredients, they all come from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They are not independent. They have their origin in the Supreme Lord. So everything actually comes from the Personality of Godhead. And then Prabhupada quotes this, Brahma Samhita Sarva Karna Karanam. Lord Brahma has already stated this. Of course, these points people will not always like to accept. That you say, oh, there's a God behind everything, but have you seen him like that? You know, they want to know why you have to believe in God. Time itself can create. Time is supreme. People worship time. People worship fire. People worship water. And there's so many different things they worship. So the ingredients are important, time is important, and the, and the, uh, the, the, cre the creator, well the creator, he, he what, what does he create? If, he's, if, he's, if it's like Lord Brahma, then he's a secondary creator. Lord Brahma didn't actually create anything. He just, he is an engineer, right? They take the bits and put them together and they make things. And that's why the gopis were angry at Brahma. They said they made these eyes that blink. We cannot see Krishna all the time, that he's a useless creator. So like that, there's creators but uh, the original creator, the original cause of everything is the personality of Godhead. So Narada Muni advises the Prachetas that they should worship the direct cause. If you worship the other things, then that's indirect cause. But the direct cause is the personality of Godhead, the original person. And then Prabhupada refers to the examples which had already been given by Narada Muni to the Prachetas, that you water the plant, you water the root. You feed the body, you feed the stomach. Everything has its relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we should engage in devotional service. Narada Muni is telling the Prachetas that they're, they're meant to do service for the Supreme Lord. And by serving the Supreme Lord, all other things are achieved. Every, you don't need to do anything else. If you're serving the Supreme Lord, if you've, take, if you've surrendered everything to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to do uh, any great 
austerities, you don't have to study a lot of books, you don't have to do a lot of charity, you don't have to, there's all these other things which people do, you know, to, they, they're doing to get some kind of power. But if you simply worship the Supreme Lord, then all of these other things are not important. And so Prabhupada quotes that verse from the Bhagavad Gita, that simply by serving Krishna, all purposes are achieved. Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Ashanta Krishna Bhakta Niskam Saish Ashanta that these other people are not, they're not satisfied. Only the devotee is satisfied because he's serving the Supreme Lord. So one who is a devotee is freed from all debts and obligations because he's surrendered to the, to the Lord. He doesn't have to worry about any other debts or obligations he may have. People often worry, oh, I have this responsibility, I have that responsibility. They have, but if you've taken full shelter of Krishna, then you're freed from all debts and obligations. So, Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Kama Kritahaya. Simply by serving the Supreme Lord Krishna, all these other purposes are achieved. This is the power of devotional service. Of course, this is, this is controversial. Mm -hmm. People will say, no, 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 who says it? You know, not everyone is going to accept the scriptures. So we may quote this scripture, they'll say, no, there's other scriptures. They always have so many other quotes, other scriptures. We're quoting our scriptures. They have their scriptures so many different con controversial things. So that is the nature of Krishna consciousness that uh, the Lord is the master of the inconceivable ways. Anupalaksha Vartmane in the prayers of Sukadeva Goswami when Sukadeva Goswami was described what he was asked by Maharaj Pariksit to describe the process of creation. So before he began to describe the process of creation, he offers his prayers. You can read them in the second chapter, second canto of the Bhagavatam, fourth chapter. Sukadeva Goswami's prayers for creation, to understand the creation. Because such a complex subject, it's very complex. So before he had, before he began to describe the creation, he first of all offered prayers. And he describes in the very first verse that that Supreme Lord is known, he, he's the master of the inconceivable way. He does everything in an inconceivable manner that's very difficult to understand him. Atashri Krishna Nabavid, Nabavid, Atashri Krishna Namadi, Nabavid Grihamindriyani. That we cannot understand the Lord by our senses. Our senses are limited and imperfect. What can we understand? What do we know about even the material world? What do we know about even things here in Zurich? How much do we know? <laughs> There's so many things we don't know. What to speak of the whole cosmic manifestation. But the Supreme Lord, He knows everything. Just like if you build, if you're the architect and you design a building, then you know everything about the building. So the same way, the one who is the creator, who is responsible for this creation, he knows everything about the whole universe. He knows each and every aspect of the material world. He knows it all in detail. Because he designed it, he's behind it, he's the origin of it. He's the original cause. So he knows everything about the material world. It's inconceivable to us. But to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, 
Nothing is inconceivable. He knows everything. So Sukadeva Goswami describes how the Lord is a master of the inconceivable ways. And we, we want to worship him. Narada Muni is telling the Prachetas, you should worship the Lord. And how to worship the Lord? Simply by devotional service. You should engage in the nine angas of bhakti yoga, beginning with hearing and chanting. The, the roots of the bhakti <coughs> yoga process are the shravanam and kirtan. We have to hear about the Lord. We have to be reminded about him and his powers and his energies and his activities. We have to hear again and again. So Narada Muni is encouraging the Prachetas that they should take up devotional service. And in this way they will come to know the Lord, they will come to please the Lord and they can develop knowledge of their relationship with the Lord. Hmm? We want to understand what is our relationship with Him. So He can reveal that to us when he is pleased by our devotional service. As he says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Satatam, uh, to those who are constantly devoted to me and worship, Satatam Kirtan, no. What's the beginning of the verse? Satatam Kirtan. No. Satatam Kirtan. Mm -hmm. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they may come to me. We don't, it's one of the chapter slokis, right? The four nutshell verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajitam pritipurvikam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam mupayantite. And then Krishna says, Teshami vanu kampartam ahamma jnana jam tamaha nashayami atma bhavasto jnana vittipena basvata. Out of compassion for them, I, dwelling in their heart, destroy the darkness born of ignorance. So that's, that's our situation, that we're in ignorance. We're the conditioned souls. And we're in ignorance, but by engaging in devotional service, simply by rendering some service to the Lord, we can please Him and we can develop real knowledge. We can come to the, we can come to understand Him. So it, it's important for us to and follow this instruction of Narada Muni, which He has given to the Prachetas that it's meant for not only the prachetas, but it's meant for everyone, that they should engage themselves in the service of the Personality of Godhead. Understanding our relationship with the Lord. Narada Muni had been giving so many examples about the relationship of the living entity to the Lord, and particularly the root the root of the tree. We are, we are like some tiny leaf on the tree. We have a relationship with the Lord, but we have to be connected to the Lord. And the process, the way we connect is by bhakti yoga. Yoga means to link, to connect. So we connect ourselves by engaging in this bhakti yoga process. People like yoga. So many people that they like to do yoga. So we teach them bhakti yoga. The goal of the yoga ladder is to come to bhakti, to devotion. All of the other activities are then not required. Once you come to bhakti yoga, 
then you're at the top of the yoga ladder. And one who is a devotee, he's got, he's, he's, he's also a jnana yogi, he's also a karma yogi, he's also a jnana yogi. Because bhakti yoga includes everything. So, uh, uh, Prabhupada is quoting this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, which said, simply by serving Krishna, one achieves all, one, one is accomplishing all other things. That, that, that verse uh, the, the describing faith, the Chaitanya Charitamrita is talking about faith, that you have to have faith. And then one who has that faith, they know that simply by doing bhakti yoga, all other purposes are accomplished. Everything else is done for one who is engaging in bhakti yoga. We don't have to worry about other things. We simply have to concentrate on bhakti yoga. So, why? Because bhakti yoga includes everything. Karma yoga means detached work. A devotee is detached. He's working, he performs his duty, he will do the duty in a detached manner. The karma yogi, karma, karmis, they want to enjoy the result, but the karma yogi will give the result of his work. So one who is doing bhakti yoga, he gives the result of his work for the pleasure of Krishna. And a devotee is also a jnana yogi. He has knowledge, he understands the Lord. He understands the, how the Lord has many different energies. Parashya shakti vivadaiva shruyate. The Lord has many different energies. And the devotee understands these things and how, the, how we are also the energy of the Lord. We are also his prakriti as living entities. We have that relationship. So that is jnan. And a devotee is also engaged in meditation, dhyana yoga. His med a devotee is always remembering Krishna. We're always meditating on the holy name of Krishna. We're always remembering the deities. We're always in, in this way, our mind's always fixed on Krishna. So everything is being done in bhakti yoga. You do bhakti yoga, you don't have to do anything else. We, get, we can, even we give up responsibilities to become a devotee, and if we fall down again, still there's no loss. There's no loss, because you've tried the best to, to serve Krishna. We may not have been ready to give up everything. Sometimes people come to Krishna consciousness, and they give up the material world, they take up Krishna consciousness, but then after some time, they go away. They go back into the material world. So there's no, there's no harm. These things happen. We, can, we, don't, we try to avoid it, of course. We do our best to keep people in Krishna consciousness. We don't want them to go away. But if they, if they do go away, there's no loss on their part. Actually, it's, it was beneficial to them that they spent time to do service for Lord Krishna. Just like we have some people, we have some devotees in Thailand. And they've been, they were devotees before, and some of them were even sannyasis before. And they're living in Thailand. And they say, you know, they will tell me, they'll say, they'll say, you know, I was never really a sannyasi, but I did some service for Prabhupada. So they have that appreciation that they did some service for Prabhupada. What are they doing in the material world? Who are they? They're just simply serving their own self, taking care of their family, like that. But they know when they were serving Prabhupada, that was the greatest 
benefit to them in their life. There was another devotee, maybe you remember the devotee, Sorabi Prabhu. You remember him? Sorabi? He designed Prabhupada's samadhis in Vrindavan and in Mayapur. He designed the Vrindavan temple. He designed the Juhu temple. He was the architect for all of these different buildings. He came to Krishna consciousness and Prabhupada immediately engaged him, said, you build this temple in Vrindavan. And he, he designed the whole place. And so he was a devotee and he did the, all these things. But after Prabhupada left the world, you know, he got a bit, he got a bit, somehow he deviated and he didn't keep up his sadhana. And so he gave up Krishna consciousness. But I remember meeting him and he told me, he said, you know, those were the best years of my life when I was a devotee. You know, he, he, he got married and got into some business and everything. He was, you know, he's doing okay in the material world. He had a business and like, but, but he, knew, he knows that when he was a devotee, those were the best years of his life. And to go, people come to Krishna consciousness, whatever time they spend in Krishna consciousness, it's for their eternal benefit. Because they gave the time for the service of Krishna. So that gives them eternal benefit. And there, was, there was one devotee, he was taking photographs of Prabhupada. His job was a photographer. And he was traveling and often going to foreign countries to take pictures and he took pictures of all those temples which are in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He did a lot of work taking photographs. And later on, you know, there was not there was no work for him, you know, there was no more Prabhupada and <laughs> there was no not so much need of taking pictures anymore. So he was kind of out of out of a service. And so he kind of got weak in his sadhana and spiritual practice. So he, at one point he was regretting, he said, I sacrificed so much of my time, so much of my life for Krishna. He was feeling a little bitter that I've sacrificed so much of my time, I give up so much of my life just to do this work, to do this service for Krishna, and now I have nothing. But actually he had, he had a lot, he has a lot, to, it's all to his credit that he did all these things for Krishna. That he did so many, he took so many pictures of Prabhupada, he took so many pictures of holy places and of deities, he did so much wonderful service. It's to his credit. And that, that, that's in his spiritual bank account. And although he may feel that he lost materially, actually he gained, he gained so much spiritually because he was doing so much for the service of Prabhupada and the Krishna consciousness movement. So one who comes to Krishna does some service, he's never the loser. Whatever advancement he's made, that advancement will never be lost. And if in the future, later on, they may come, will come back. Get, he will come back in the future, maybe not in this life, we don't know. We hope in this life. Many devotees do come back in this life. They could take up Krishna consciousness from where they left off. There are different sannyas, some sannyasis, they'd gone away and, the, you know, they were, they were not doing that. They were just in the road, they were just in, in misery in the material world. And then they come back to Krishna consciousness. There was one devotee who was a sannyasi 
and he met Jaipataka Swami and, and initially he'd been with Jaipataka Swami the two of them had been the first two devotees to come to India and they, they stayed in India when there were no temples and they stayed in the Gaudiya Mat together and so they and so this other sannyasi he went away he got into some material activities and but then later on he came back came back to Krishna consciousness and he met Jaipataka Swami again and they embraced you know and it was such a nice reunion and he's there in Krishna consciousness he's there he's staying in temp in one community where devotees are so he 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 had the, he had the good fortune to come back to Krishna consciousness although he got he went away for some time he knew he'd come back to Krishna that his life in Krishna consciousness is much better than in the material world. To come back and do something with this life, be with the devotees and hear about Krishna and do service is much better than wasting your life in the material world, serving wicked and miserly people. What do you benefit? You <laughs> simply temporary pleasure of the senses. So Krishna consciousness, devotional service is meant to be taken up by everyone. Of course you don't need to give up your job, you don't need to leave your your home, or you can be Krishna conscious anywhere. And Prabhupada said, so long as the family is not an obstacle, then you can stay in family be with the family. But Prabhupada found there were some obstacles in his family life, so he came out from the family and he then took sannyas and took up the missionary activities. Krishna arranges these things. Sometimes in the material world, the family life, the working and the job, it can be a big obstacle to our Krishna consciousness. We get very entangled in material life. And people think, I have no time. I have no time to chant my rounds. I have no time to so busy. <laughs> you know? But that's just an excuse. You know, everyone has got time. You, we've all got time. We've all got duties to do, other things to do. We don't just only chant Hare Krishna all day. There's so many things we're doing to keep busy. People, people, and sometimes you get people saying, I have a family, I have a job, I have so many duties to do, I have to take care of my kids and everything. And they say it's all right for you, you have no kids, you have no family, you, you don't have to do all these things. But we can say, well, I may not be doing these things, but there are many devotees who do have these things. There are many devotees who do have homes, and they have their families, and they have jobs, and they have children, but they're Krishna conscious. They're working in the job, and they're chanting also. They take time to chant. They have their families, they have their homes, they have their jobs, but they're Krishna conscious also. They keep their Krishna consciousness. Arjuna had four wives, right? <laughs> Arjuna's one, Drupadi, Subhadra, uh, Chitrangata, and uh, the other one, Ul Ulupi. So four wives Arjuna had. So you know, <laughs> he, he had he had a home, and he had a lot of things to take care of. You know, they were real, all the intrigues, all the problems they went through, issues. But he never gave up Krishna consciousness. And there are many examples in the modern day. Also, we have many wonderful devotees 
who are very Krishna conscious. Although they may be working in a job and they have a family and they have children. I was in, in, in the Middle East, there are many devotees there in the Middle East, India, from India, and they're working there and they have their families and they have their jobs, but they do a lot of preaching, they do so much activities, they're so Krishna conscious. You go to their homes and you see the deities and they have beautiful altars and doing the worship. So you can't, we cannot say that, oh, I have no time. Everybody's got time. If you want to have time, you have time. It's, you have to want to. So that, that is the real issue that a lot of time people, they don't want to. They don't want to make time for chanting and they have so many excuses. Oh, I have this to do, I have that to do. Oh, you don't know all my problems. Oh, everybody has problems, everybody has things to do. But we have to understand something is important. If something is important, then we will make time to do it. But people think, all oh, these other things are more important. They, they minimize the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. They minimize the importance of reading Srimad Bhagavatam and doing devotional service. But there are many people also in family life, also working, doing jobs and so on, and they're, they're very Krishna conscious. And if we look at the Mahajans, 12 Mahajans, seven of them are in Grihastha life. They're, they're the authorities on devotional service. But there are seven people there who are all Grihasthas. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu Komar Kapilomano Pralado Janako Bhishmo Balir Vyasaki Vayam. If you go through them, seven, there are seven from the 12 are in Grihastha life which shows us certainly it's possible to be in family life and to be Krishna conscious. So we cannot say, oh because I have a family, because I have a job, I have no time. No, everybody has the same time. It's there. We have to make use of the time. It's making use of the time. Can't say have no time, we have time but make use of the time to chant and to hear about Krishna, to do service for Krishna. Just like the grihasthas are coming and doing service. I see so many different people on the altar at different times. They're coming and doing service, worshipping the deities. It's very nice to see. And this is common. In, in, in uh, Vaishasika zone, Vaishasika, Prabhu, he has the, the weekend warriors, you know. The people are working all week, but on the weekend he gets them to go out for Sankirtan. And they go out for book distribution. Sometimes the whole family goes, husband and wife and child. They all go together. And they will go and knock on the door and try to show books to people. They will distribute books. So weekend warriors are there, you know, working every week, going on every, they're giving up their weekend to do Sankirtan, to go out and preach. And so, very nice examples, how householders can be Krishna conscious. And many of our temples also like that because our society is more congregational based rather than ashram. We know 20, 30 years ago we had a lot of people in the ashram, but we don't have that so much now, but we have congregation and we get the congregation to engage in devotional service. And different ladies will come and cook and dress the deities and make flower vases. Different things have to be done, different services. We get people to come to do accounts for us, somebody has to keep the accounts. And so many things have to be done to maintain the temple. 
and we need the support of the congregation to help to do all of these things. Without the, con without the congregation it would be impossible to keep the temple going. There's only a few people staying in the ashram and we want to do so many other things as well. We have to go out for preaching, we have to go out and try to distribute books, Some go out for uh, different programs and engagements. There's so many activities. So. Uh, everybody working together, helping together, cooperating together. We say many hands make light work. Right? If you have many people helping and engaging in service, then it's not so difficult, it's not so much effort required. Everybody does some, a little bit of service, help out. So it reduces the burden. But if you're alone, then it's very difficult. You know, maybe you worry about who's coming to the temple, so I'll keep the door locked, so nobody will come. <laughs> so you have the deities to yourself. Some, some places, some places, sometimes happens like that. So we don't want to be like that. We like to have the temple open any time people can come and see the deities. We don't know when people are going to come. But we're here. If people come, somebody is here to speak to them, take care of them. Okay, any question? Any comment? Yeah. It's not about this Bhagavatam class. It's a, I want to get to know uh, how you was inspired to become a sannyasi. Like uh, probably maybe before you was a brahmachari. How it happened that you became a sannyasi? What inspired you? And because we see that some people remain brahmachari for whole life. Because what? We can see that some brahmachari can be brahmachari for whole life, but some of them become sannyasi. And what inspired you to become sannyasi? How it happened with you? Well, I was working under Tamal Krishna Goswami and he was a sannyasi and he liked to see other people also come, become sannyasis. So association is important. He told, he wanted me to initiate, he, he wanted me to initiate when I was still a brahmachari. He had me recommended to initiate, to start initiating people. So I thought, well, if I'm going to initiate people, I should take sannyas, it will be better. So he said, yes, that's the right, I, right thing. So he encouraged me. Mm -hmm. We need many spiritual masters. There are many people who need initiation. So we need many spiritual masters. At Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is ordered. Yari Deki Tari Kao Krishna Upadesh Amar Agaya Guru Hana Tara Eidesh. By my order, Amar Agaya Guru Hana, by my order become a spiritual master and save the world. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has ordered everyone should become spiritual master, you should be a, a guru, you should teach. You may not be Diksha guru, but at least you should give Shiksha. 
everyone should give shik, we should be able to give instruction to people, tell them about Krishna. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. So that is the business of a spiritual teacher. There's different kinds of spiritual teachers. There's the one who gives instruction and there's the one who shows the path, the Vartma Pradaksha Guru. He's showing the path to people, to bring them to Krishna Consciousness. So he's also Guru. And there's no difference between the Shiksha and the Diksha Guru. Qualification is the same. Just as the, the Diksha Guru has to be qualified, the Shiksha Guru has to be qualified. So it's, a, it's a important. We see a lot of people in our movement are actually giving instruction. And we need many more. There's so much to be done. There's so many people, so many conditioned souls. So many people lost in the material world and they need help, they need instruction. So the, the spiritual teacher is the one to open the eyes, right? Oma jnana timbarandasya. Because we're in ignorance, we're in ajnana, we have no knowledge. So the spiritual teacher is the one who opens the eyes with the torch light of knowledge. So we have to give this knowledge, whatever we know about Krishna, we should share it with others. Don't just keep it for ourselves. Don't be miserly. There is the Kripana and the Brahmana. Kripana means miserly person. Miserly person, they have money. They just like to count it. <laughs> they like to smell it. They like to look at it. They don't spend it. Maybe they don't have wife. Huh? If they have a wife, then they'll spend it. But that is Kripana, like that. But Brahmana, the brahmana is the generous person. Bra brahmanas, you even you ask them for the body, can you give the bones from your body? Oh, why not? Dadichi is the example. Indra came to Dadichi and he's asking Dadichi Muni, can you give me the bones from your body? And Dadichi said to Indra, don't you know the body is the thing we're most attached to? It's the most difficult thing to give up. You can give up your family, you can give up your wealth, you can give up your motor car, you can give up many things. But to give up your body, your bones, means to give up your life. So Indra was asking Dadichi Muni, give me the bone, can you give me the bones from your body? And Dadichi is saying, oh, I, I, he, Dadichi was already a very renounced person, but he wanted to hear, he wanted to hear from Indra. So he said to Indra, don't you know the body is the thing we're most attached to? So Indra gave an interesting reply. He said, well, you know, charity, it, it, for some people it's difficult to give charity, but it's also difficult to ask for charity. Right? 
when we sometimes when we go for book distribution, you know, some people they don't like to ask for charity. They won't ask anything. <laughs> Or they feel shy to ask people to, to give some money. So sometimes, it, for some people, it's difficult to ask for charity. It's also difficult to give charity sometimes. You know, sometimes people may be very poor, and maybe they're maintaining a family, they have no money, and they're very poor, they can't afford to give charity. I was distributing books in Taiwan one time and so this one man gave me some money. <laughs> a little while later <laughs> a woman came on the motorbike and she said, are you the one? This man came, the man came gave you money. <laughs> I was talking to another person at the time as well yeah. and she came and started saying, my husband just gave you all the money we had in the house, you know. I have no money now to feed the children, you know. You have to give me that money back. <laughs> it was an interesting situation. But uh, these things happen. Okay, I said, okay, I give her the money back, take it back, you know. What to do? don't want to make a big issue, you know. And she said, you need the money to feed the children. It was the only money they had. And he gave it to me. <laughs> he was drunk, you know. <laughs> mm. And so charity is sometimes difficult for some people to give. And to ask for charity is also difficult sometimes. So Dadichi said, okay, very nice, yes. And so he gave up his body and Indra got the bones and he could make his Bajra weapon and he could go and kill Vritasura. So the Brahmanas are like that, they're very charitable. They, you, they, if they have something, somebody asks for it, they'll give it. They're not attached. Somebody wants, okay, take it. Better to give it. If you don't give it, somebody will steal it. And if, if somebody steals from you, then you feel bad. But if you give it yourself, you give it in charity, you feel, I give, you feel good. <laughs> you can give something. So better to be Brahmana than Kripana. Better to use the human life for Krishna consciousness. Don't waste it in just sense, in sense gratification. Okay? Any other point? Okay. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, yeah. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to Brinda ki.